Google's Pixel 9 series devices just launched a few days ago and Google was eager to show us how far it has progressed with Skynet. Uh, I mean, Gemini. Call me AI. Gemini. There's a slew of new features coming with the Pixel 9 phones thanks to their Tensor G4 chip. When asked which of these features will be available to older Pixel devices, Google says and yes, I am reading these off of an iPad because I think the Pixel tablet is kind of bad, but please don't tell Google I said that. Anyway, we're here to talk about the new Gemini AI features for Android. And yes, Google wants it to be for Android. For all phones, it even used the Galaxy S24 Ultra to show off some of them on stage. It just so happens that Pixels are Google's phones, so they get them early and get some exclusives. First of all, Gemini AI is getting multimodal integration. This means that it can now process video, pictures, text and whatever it knows from your apps or your Google account. So you should be able to show Gemini AI a poster of Taylor Swift's tour dates and ask the AI, when will I be able to attend one of those? Gemini AI will come back at you with, haha, I saw your bank account, you can't afford those tickets. Or it will just sift through your calendar, your schedule with knowledge about your travels, your locations and maybe suggest the right city and the right time. Next we have Gemini Live, which means that the AI will now be able to follow along and have a natural conversation with you, even if you jump through topics, change topic, come back. The point is, instead of firing up a podcast or music while you're walking around or doing chores, you can have a discussion, learn something new, or have a brainstorm session, even about a gift. Just don't tell your friend that the AI picked out their birthday present. In the photography field, we have Add Me, yet another feature that's showing us that we're moving to a dystopian future where human interaction will be shunned and replaced by screens. Uh, editor, insert a clip from the WALL-E movie if Disney doesn't sue us. Okay, so in practice, it's a great feature. If you have a group of friends, you all want to take a picture, but you all want to be in the picture so that there's nobody to hold the camera. One of you goes out, takes a photo, the phone remembers it and holds it in the viewfinder in an augmented reality layer. Then you switch in and the new cameraman just looks at the already taken picture, tells you where to stand, and when they take a snap, the AI stitches them all together. Then you look like you're fitting in the original picture without asking a scary stranger to take it for you. Can you tell I'm having mixed feelings about this? It's kind of cool. It is a solution to some sort of a problem. Kind of not really real, I don't know. Then we have auto frame and reimagine. Now with auto frame, the AI will take what it knows about good photography practices. You give it a photo, and it will decide to reframe it in a way. It may crop some from the side, but it can also generate stuff and make the photo bigger or wider. I don't know, we do need a lot of hands-on time with that to figure out what exactly it does and if it's really that good. Reimagine is pretty cool. You can tap on any area of a photo, like a house, the sky, the ground, you know, and then you give it a text prompt of what you want it to do. So delete the house, turn the sky into lava, turn the ground into marshmallows. We've seen similar things from Photoshop just recently, but it's safe to assume that not everyone has an Adobe subscription, but many many people have Android phones, so yeah, it's just becoming more commonly adopted thanks to Gemini. And now we have an improved video boost which will be able to upscale your videos to 8K, so you can't record in 8K on the pixels, but can be video boosted to 8K. Last year, when Video Boost first launched, it was actually very hard to share your upscaled videos outside the Google Photos uh, platform. You had to share a link or you had to send the link to yourself in a multi-step complicated plan to cheat the system and actually download the video. Was that fixed? No? Can we, can we please maybe get that going? The weather app will now also be powered by AI and Google said, let me quote, users will not have to scroll through a bunch of numbers to get a sense of the day's weather. Do you mean degrees? Uh, the UV index? Uh, wind speed? Because those, those are measured in numbers, I, I, I think. As far as I understand, you'd be able to customize exactly what you care to see on top of your weather app. For example, I always follow sunrise and sunset times for my own personal reasons, not a vampire. And I guess Gemini will learn and give me that information at the top in a notification, in a digest. 
I wonder how it would tell me the time of the sunset without using numbers though. We'll see. Soon-ish. <laughs> Magic list. Okay, no memeing here. This one is actually pretty cool. If you want to make pancakes but can't be bothered about uh, making a shopping list yourself, just tell Gemini AI to add the ingredients for 20 pancakes to your shopping list. Eggs, flour, milk, Dr. Pepper. What, you don't put Dr. Pepper in your pancakes? Weird though. Also, the Google ads for the new Pixel phones show that you can actually use the camera to show the Gemini AI what's in your fridge and it will look at all the ingredients and suggest a recipe with that. Again, mind-blowing. My fridge is full of beer, moldy cheese and a lifetime of regret. I wonder what kind of meal I can make with that. A new screenshots dedicated app is a runner-up for our prize of this is useful but also oddly creepy. So apparently every screenshot you take will be stored in a separate screenshot app where the Gemini AI will analyze it and figure out what's on the screenshot. So you can just search for it with a text prompt later on. So for example, if you screenshotted a favorite how-to guide, you can then come back to the screenshot app and type in how to make Windows 11 not terrible. I knew that you worked at Microsoft. Google assures us that all of the processing is done on device thanks to the Tensor G4, so no one will be snooping on your screenshots, pinky promise. And last, but certainly not least, our winner of very useful but also very creepy for the month. With the speed AI is going, this award should become a weekly thing. The new feature is called Call Notes. So every time you have a phone call and you hang up, the Google Assistant, sorry, Gemini Assistant will come up with a summary of what was talked about, which you can reference at a later time. If someone is dictating a phone number to you, if you're making plans for Friday, no need to grab a pen, Google says, call notes will record all of it. What I want to know is, will it be able to tell me how many mimosas my significant other has had at brunch and should I be stocking up on aspirin? Eh, probably with the Pixel 10 next year. Anyway, these are all the new features joining uh, things like call screening, voice message transcriptions, direct my call, best take and other cool smart things that Pixels have been able to do thus far. Here's hoping that one day maybe they will have a higher benchmark score than a 4 year old iPhone. Pitchforks down boys, I'm out of here. If you like the video, like it, sub, I'll see you next time. Bye!